Once you know how to make one round box with a lid in Design Space, you can make them in any size. Here's how. Hello there. I'm going to make a round box with a lid that will fit this size candle in that you can make with any of the Cricut machines, including the Cricut Joy. And I'll also explain how you can make a round box of any size. Let's get started. You're going to need two pieces of A4 heavyweight cardstock. Ideally, you're also going to need a scoring wheel or a scoring stylus. But if you don't have either of those, please don't worry. I will show you what you can do very easily instead. And you'll need a fine point blade and some strong glue. You're going to need to start off in design space and you're going to need four circles, two squares and a triangle. You'll need two circles and one square for the lid and two circles and one square for the main box and I'll explain why we need the triangle in a moment. Let's start by changing the colour of the pieces we need for the main box into a different colour. I'm going to go with yellow and then the pieces that we need for the lid into a different colour. This is so we can see more clearly what we're doing. It will also put them on separate mats in the Make It page. Firstly, we're going to need to resize the circles. I'm going to make this box to fit a candle which is just under two and a half inches in diameter and three and a half inches tall with the wick up. These are the measurements that I'm going to be referring to. My first circle is going to be inside the box and I've made that 2.5 inches in diameter. The second circle is going to go at the bottom on the outside of the box and I'm going to make it 0.05 inches wider to give a neater finish. You can just about see the difference in size. You wouldn't want it to be any bigger because it will stand out from the bottom. Okay, let's resize the circles for the lid. We want the lid to fit nicely, not too loose and not too tight. So you'll need to add 0.05 inches to the diameter for the circle that will go on the inside of the lid. So it will need to be 2.55 inches. And for the second circle, you'll want to add an extra 0.05 inches as before for a neater finish. Now you'll need to resize the yellow square. And you're going to need to work out the circumference of the circle to know how wide to make this piece, which is a lot easier than it may sound with the wonder of Google at our fingertips. To do this, we need to know the radius of the circle, which is half the diameter. So for this circle, that's 1.25 inches. Then go to Google and search for circumference of a circle and pop in the radius measurement into the box. This gives us a circumference of 7.85 inches for this box. You're going to want to add 0.5 inches to that measurement to allow space for gluing it together. This gives us a measurement of 8.35 inches. And you're going to want to add 0.5 inches to the height of your box so that you can join it to the bottom. Next, you're going to want to place your rectangle piece up in the left-hand corner of the canvas. Check that the X and Y positions are set at zero. We're going to be using this function to quickly and accurately position elements on the canvas. And I'll be explaining how it works for anyone who hasn't used this function yet. But first we're going to use our triangle and we need to resize it to 0.5 inches by 0.5 inches. And you're going to create a row of triangles and weld them together. This side panel is just under eight and a quarter inches wide, so I'm going to need 17 triangles. But first I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and position it in the top left of the canvas. So to use the XY position function, you need to understand that the X refers to the horizontal guide and the Y refers to the vertical guide. The XY position refers to the position of the top left corner of the bounding box of your shape. They're like coordinates, so for this triangle, the position is X7, Y3. And for our triangle, the position is X0, Y0. So let's create our row of triangles. A fast way to do this is to duplicate it four times so that I then have five. And then place them up against the top edge of the canvas and we'll use the position tool to check that they are positioned accurately. You want the triangles to be placed next to each other. The base of the triangle is 0.5 inches. So we want the Y position to stay at zero for each triangle but for the X position to move up 0.5 inches for each triangle. Once you've got those five triangles in position, you'll want to move the yellow box out of the way. 
highlight the five triangles without moving them and weld them together. Then you're going to want to duplicate that set of five triangles three times so that you've got four sets. And then position them next to your first set. The X position of your second set will be 2.5. For the third set it will be 5 and for the final set it will be 7.5 and the Y will remain at 0. Once they're all in position, highlight them all and weld. Next you're going to want to duplicate that set so that you have a set ready to use for your lid. OK, let's move our side panel back to the 0, 0 position. Then select the row of triangles and the side panel and go down to Slice. When you see your slice results appear in the right panel, you can remove the sliced elements that you don't want. Now we're going to move on to the lid pieces. So we'll need our other coloured square and also our other row of triangles. And we're going to need to work out the circumference again of the smaller of the two lid circles. This circle is 2.55 inches, so we need to put in a radius of 1.275, which gives us a circumference of 8.01, which we can round down to 8 inches, and then we add on the 0.5 inches that we need for the join. I'm going to make my lid 1 inch tall and add on half an inch for the join. Now you need to make sure that your lid piece is up in the top left corner of the canvas in the X0, Y0 position and then place your row of triangles on the top as before. Click on the row of triangles in the right panel and then hold your shift key down and find the lid piece. This will select them both and then you can go down to slice on the bottom of the right panel. Then remove and delete the slice elements that you don't need. Now we're going to add in some score lines. So we need to select a line from shapes and it needs to be horizontal. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and it needs to be the same length as the lid piece. And we can use the position tool again to put it in place. First of all, we need to make sure our lid piece is in the zero zero position. And we want our score line to sit just under the triangles, which means we need the X position to be at zero and the Y position to be at 0.5. And now we need to highlight the lid piece and the score line and attach them. We need another score line for the side panel of our box. So go to the panel on the right and find the score line and then click duplicate. And we're going to use the position tool again to put it in place. First move the side panel across to the left side of the canvas and then set the X position at zero and the Y position at six inches. Now select the score line and set the X position at 0 and the Y position at 6.5 inches. Now you can just adjust the length of the score line to the same length as the side panel which was 8.35 inches. And as before, highlight the score line and the side panel and attach. To help make sure you don't get a wonky box when you're gluing it together, it's a good idea to add in a couple more score lines. First you'll want to check that your lid piece is in the 0, zero position and you'll want the height of your line to be the same height as the lid piece minus the height of the triangle tabs, so that'll be one inch. And you'll want to set the X position at 0.5 and the Y position at 0.5. Then hit return on your keyboard. Highlight the score line and the lid piece and attach. And repeat the process for the side panel. The position this time is going to be X 0.5, Y 6.5. Then adjust the height of the score line to 3.5 inches and then attach as before. And just before we go to the Make It page, I'm just grouping my side panel and two circles together and attaching them so that I can cut them from one piece of material and I'll do the same with the lid pieces. On the Make It page we need to choose our material and I'm using a heavy cardstock. And Design Space has automatically put in a double scoring wheel in clamp B, which I'm going to edit and change to the single scoring wheel, or you could use a stylus if you have one of those instead. The first operation is scoring followed by the cut. My first mat is for the side panel and two circles, so I'm going to prepare my two pieces of card and put the larger piece on the first mat. I find using a brayer helps to make sure it adheres 
better to the mat but my mats are starting to lose a bit of stickiness so I'm just checking to see if they're secure and they don't look secure enough so I'm adding some washi tape. Always better to be safe than sorry. I need to put my scoring wheel into clamp B and then feed my mat underneath the two white guides. I also moved my white rollers into position to help keep the card on the mat. You're going to need your fine point blade next and I always check that it's clean beforehand and if not then I use a bit of tin foil and stab it in to clean it. When your machine is finished with the first mat, unload it and do the same with the second piece of cardstock. Before unloading your mat, it's always a good idea to check that your material has been cut through properly. If it hasn't, then you will always be able to press start again and do another cut. Once your pieces are all scored and cut, it's time to compile your round box. To start off with, you'll need your side panel and the smaller of the two matching circles. Fold the triangles down at the score line. If you don't have a scoring wheel or scoring stylus, then what you can do instead is to use a round-ended knife and a ruler to draw in a score line. Next, you're going to need some strong glue or some red tape, and you're going to want to put it down the side opposite to the score line on the inside of the side panel. This will be to join it together after we've glued the side panel to the circle. Now we're going to glue the small inside circle to the bottom of the side panel. This will form the base of our round box. You need a strong glue. I'm using Dry's Clear Adhesive from Art Glitter, which is my favourite. I'd love to know what your favourite strong glue is. Let me know in the comments. This part takes a little bit of time and patience. I find it works best to work with three triangles at a time. So I'm just putting glue on the first three. Then I'm going to position my circle on top and curve the side panel around and hold it in place for about 10 seconds. And then I'll glue the next three triangles and do the same and work my way along the panel and round the circle in this way. When you get to the end, it can be easier to leave the last triangle unglued and glue the side panel together first using the score line as a guide to make sure you get a nice straight join and not a wonky box. And then glue the last triangle to the bottom. Now you're going to want to glue all the way around the bottom of the pot and take your second circle and glue that into place. Now you're going to want to repeat the whole process again with the lid pieces.
I really hope you found this video helpful and enjoy making your own round boxes. I'd love to hear how you get on. Do let me know in the comments. Bye bye for now.